Thank you for joining us today for this COVID-19 briefing on March the 4th, 2021 to commemorate the one year anniversary of COVID here in Tulsa. To start today's press conference, uh, we will first hear from Reverend Chris Moore who will get us started. Uh, Reverend, you have the floor. Let us begin with a deep breath here on this one year commemoration and join together in the spirit of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we come to you in many ways through many paths, all seeking your wisdom and your guidance and your help. In this past year, we have all borne so much grief, much of it unprocessed right now, set aside so that we might get through the next day. We have lost so many people close to us and those we will never know. The numbers are hard to process. Many of us have lost jobs and opportunities, missed countless occasions. We've been sequestered into marking important transitions on a screen or distanced from those we really needed to hug. The masks we wear cannot mask the pain we all feel, nor the deep concern and debate over how we get back to better. Yet you remind us with each sunrise, Holy One, that you are the God of new beginnings, the creator of life from lifelessness, the bringer of hope and promise, the rainbow at the end of every storm. And faith, one of your prophets reminded us, is taking that first step in the darkness, even when you cannot see the whole staircase. May that same wisdom, guidance, aid, and faith we have longed for over the last year be with us now, as these gathered plan and prepare, as they enact and enable, and as we all commemorate and commit. In your many holy names we pray. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Moore. Please stand by. We will now hear from Dr. Bruce Dart with the Tulsa Health Department. Dr. Dart, you have the floor. Thank you, Brian, and thank you, Reverend Moore, for those heartfelt words. I think we all need to hear that. Um, I think everyone knows, but Saturday will mark the one year anniversary of the first confirmed case in Oklahoma. We are thankful we took the ne necessary steps to keep, um, we are thankful that, that, that our first case took the necessary steps to keep those around him safe. Um, since that day, we know that, that all lives have changed over this past year. Today, we re report an additional 122 Tulsa County residents who have tested positive for COVID-19, brings us to a cumulative total of 71,227 people who are positive for COVID-19 in Tulsa County. Good news with that is that 69,103 have recovered. Currently, there are 1,401 confirmed active cases of COVID-19 in our county. Sadly, since our last press conference on February 18th, 56 more Tulsa County residents have died from COVID-19 through March 2nd. Um, as previously stated, uh, we've had over 71,000 cases in Tulsa County. Those are all unique cases. Our total deaths uh, um, in Tulsa County from COVID-19 are 723. Our death rate per 100,000 population is 111.83. January 2nd of 2021 was the day with the single highest case count, which was 1,224. January 12th of 2021 was a single day with the highest number of deaths reported with 18 that day alone. January was also the month with the highest total cases with almost 16,000 cases. Those aged 18 to 35 had the most cases in that group with 23,527 and thankfully there are only seven deaths in that group. Deaths disproportionately were in the groups, age group 65 and over as there were 9,227 cases but 582 deaths. Based on the average life expectancy in Tulsa County of 76.1 years, for all deaths due to COVID-19, the average years of potential life lost was 11.6 years per death. 
based on actual ages for all deaths, the total number of years of potential life loss due to COVID-19 here in Tulsa County was 4,050. I can't overstate how significant that number is for people. Through Though new cases and hospitalizations are down compared to previous months, as you probably already heard, now is not the time to relax precautions. While others are waiting to receive the vaccine, it's important to continue following the three Ws. The CDC continues to recommend correct and consistent mask use as a critical step everyone can take to, pre to prevent the spread of COVID-19. We continue to support CD rec CDC recommendations and local city ordinances for mask wearing in public. THD will continue to evaluate the data and make data-driven recommendations for Tulsa County residents and municipal leaders. The downward case trends are very encouraging, but it's too soon for the agency to change our recommendations regarding masks. Uh, regarding vaccine, THD continues to administer the COVID-19 vaccine to eligible individuals in Tulsa County, which currently includes all healthcare workers, first responders, Oklahoma's age 65 and older, pre-K through 12th grade teachers and staff, and anyone 16 years of age um, and older with comorbidities. These comorbidities include conditions like hypertension, obesity, cardiovascular disease, Down syndrome, diabetes mellitus, chronic lung, liver, or renal disease, cancers, and those who are at high risk of mortality and severe morbidity from a COVID infection. When you register on the Oklahoma vaccine portal, there's a question for you to attest your, to your health status. No further documentation is required. If you receive your vaccine from your healthcare provider, they may use your medical records and history to, to determine if you're eligible. It's important for everyone to be truthful and honest about your health status when registering for the vaccine. We know that COVID-19 can be more severe and even deadly for people with certain underlying health conditions. If you are not truthful in your responses to the registration questions, you could be taking a vaccine opportunity for someone who has a high risk of dying from COVID-19. I am pleased to report that we're now completely caught up on nearly 9,000 rescheduled appointments due to the inclement weather we had in February. I'm tremendously proud of THC staff who works so hard to get it done including working weekends to make sure we were caught up. Uh, yesterday, we opened 8,700 new appointments um, in our portal for the upcoming week. We will continue to open new appointments weekly to ensure we're doing what we can to get those vaccinated who want a vaccine. I'm also pleased to report that THD, in partnership with St. Francis Health System, Total Wellness, and Passport Health have vaccinated close to 7,900 teachers so far with another 2,500 scheduled to be complete before spring break. We're grateful to our partners and proud to be able to offer the vaccine to our local teachers and staff. We're ahead of schedule to ensure all teachers and staff have had the opportunity to schedule an appointment to receive their first dose by spring break. THC continues to work to put vaccines we receive from the Oklahoma State Department of Health into arms in approximately seven days upon receipt of, of that vaccine. According to the Oklahoma State Immunization Information System, or OSIS, THC has administered 54,302 vaccines to date, which includes 22,998 second doses. There have been more than 161,338 doses administered in Tulsa County and documented in OSIS as of March 2nd. In Tulsa County, 58.8% of residents over the age of 65 have received at least one dose of vaccine. 39.2% of residents over the age of 65 have completed the vaccine series. For Tulsa County residents over the age of 16, 20.4% have received at least one dose of vaccine and 12.1% have completed the series. Appointments are required to receive the vaccine at the THC vaccine clinic at the lower level of River Spirit Expo and must be scheduled using the Oklahoma vaccine portal at vaccinate.oklahoma.gov. If you received your first dose at the THD clinic, you are already scheduled for your second dose appointment and do not need to schedule another appointment to the portal. Information about first and second doses is available on our website, as well as a link to the portal. The portal is used by local health departments across Oklahoma to create and schedule appointments, but healthcare systems, local providers, pharmacies, and others might use their own system to schedule appointments. Oklahoma is part of a beta test for vaccinefinder.org, O-R-G, a national website through the CDC for anyone to view local vaccine opportunities. You can find that vaccinefinder.org 
or the Tulsa Health Department website to, you, to view additional vaccine locations and providers. You can also call us anytime, or not anytime, but call us at 918-582-9355 during regular business hours or call 211 at any time to receive more information about where to receive vaccine. We all know that when schools went on spring break last year, they were not able to return to in-person learning that semester due to the large rise in COVID-19 cases. Let's avoid that happening again by making smart choices for your family's spring break plans and continue to practice the three W's. Travel increases your chance of getting and spreading COVID-19. The CDC recommends you do not travel at this time. You may feel well and not have any symptoms, but you can still spread COVID-19 to family, friends, and community during, during and after travel. You definitely, should, uh, you definitely should not travel if you are exposed to COVID-19, if you are sick, or if you have tested positive for COVID-19. Don't travel with anyone who is, who is sick as well. If you choose to travel, follow CDC guidelines and stay safe. If you are eligible, get fully vaccinated for COVID-19. Wait two weeks after getting your second dose to travel because it takes time for your body to build protection once you have been vaccinated. Get tested with a viral test one to three days before you travel. Keep a copy of your test results with you during travel in case you're asked for them. Do not travel if you test positive. Wear a mask over your nose and mouth when in public settings. Masks are required on planes, buses and trains and other forms of public transportation traveling into, within or out of, of the United States in a US transportation hub such as airports and train stations. Avoid crowds and stay at least six feet from anyone who did not travel with you. It's important to do this everywhere, both indoors and outdoors. Wash your hands often or use hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol if you're, if you're planning to travel internationally. Check the requirements at your destination. When you return, all air passengers to the US are required to have a negative COVID-19 test result or documentation of re recovery from COVID-19 before they board a flight to the United States. There are many ways to enjoy the break safely with those that you live with. We, I know we're all ready to get away, but we're asking everyone to continue to stay as vigilant as COVID-19 is still here. Hopefully soon we can return to vacation planning mode. Hopefully we can return to life, which is what a goal that we all want. We are <clears throat> encouraged that we passed the milestone of more than 1 million Oklahomans vaccinated we want to vaccinate everyone who wants to receive a vaccine. As we know, it's a process that will take time to vaccinate all Oklahomans who want a vaccine. The addition of the Johnson & Johnson Janssen COVID-19 vaccine to our toolbox means more people can, can get vaccinated, which increases the overall population protected. Three COVID-19 vaccines were not studied in head-to-head -head trials. Therefore, they should not be compared to each other. However, we know that they've all shown in trials to be highly effective at preventing severe COVID-19 illness, hospitalization, and death. The best shot you can get is the best shot available to you is the one that you can get. Talk to your doctor if you have questions. I mean, we, we welcome all questions anyone might have about vaccine. It's normal to be cautious when something new comes along like this vaccine is. Wanting to know more is a good thing. It means you want to be informed. With spring on the way, it's easy to think the worst may be behind us and we're on our way to normalcy, but the new virus variants are worrisome and we continue to learn more about the science and the data regarding protection offered by vaccinations. Please, everyone, stay vigilant and stay informed. We've come too far. We've lost too much to regress now. Continue to follow the advice of public health professionals and your healthcare providers. We are going to end this pandemic and we will get back to life. Thank you all. I'd like to now introduce City of Tulsa Mayor G.T. Bynum. Thank you, Dr. Dart. Please stand by for our next speaker. We now have Mayor G.T. Bynum. Mayor, you have the floor. Great. Thank you very much. And thank you, Dr. Dart, as always. Um, a year ago Saturday, I was 
walking to a meeting here in downtown Tulsa when the governor's office called to notify me that Oklahoma's first positive test result for coronavirus had occurred in Tulsa. That feels like it was about a decade ago. And each of us individually and, and as a city have been through so much since that moment. With the benefit of hindsight, it's remarkable how quickly our lives changed in that first month. The first positive test turned up on March 6th. On March 16th, after community spread had been identified, I proclaimed a civil emergency and we limited gatherings to 50 people or less. The next day, we closed dine-in restaurants, bars, and other gathering places. A week after that, we limited gatherings to a maximum of 10 people. And on March 28th, Tulsa became the first city in the Tulsa Metro to issue a safer at home order. In less than a month, we went from no identified cases to an unprecedented citywide effort to slow the spread of the virus so that our healthcare system could equip itself for the long haul. In the last year, we've lost over 700 of our neighbors to COVID-19. There is no question in my mind that number would be substantially higher if not for two main groups of people. First, everyday Tulsans who took the necessary actions to protect the lives of your neighbors. I wanna take a moment to acknowledge the vast majority of people in our community who responded to the calls for help from our healthcare providers with daily acts of quiet heroism. You sacrificed your livelihoods, your happiness, your mobility, and so much more to protect your neighbors. And the collective response was historic for our city. You know, when I was growing up, I heard stories from my grandparents about how Tulsans helped one another during the Great Depression. I think decades from now, this generation of Tulsa children will be the grandparents, and they will be telling a future generation about how our city proved itself as a community during this challenge. But there's no group of people who've done more to save the lives of our neighbors than our healthcare heroes. They have gone to work every day, working with the very worst cases, serving not just as a point of medical care, but as a human connection for patients afflicted by a virus that isolates its victims. When family members couldn't be there to hold a hand or offer an encouraging word, you were there. When a family had to say their goodbyes to someone they loved more than anyone in the whole world, and they had to do it over the phone, you were the one holding the phone for the patient. And this is not work that you shed with your PPE at the end of a shift. We know that it stays with you. And we hope you know how thankful this community is for you and your work. Over the last month, Tulsans in all parts of our city have been sending in videos to let you know how much they appreciate you. And we're releasing that compilation today when this news conference concludes at cityoftulsa.org slash Tulsa thanks you. This video is also being shared with all of our local hospitals so that they can display it for our heroes to see while they're at work. As we look ahead, we can see a light at the end of the tunnel. Finally, COVID hospitalizations have plummeted since early January. People are clamoring to get the vaccine as quickly as possible, but we're not quite ready for the mask bonfire just yet. As we have at every step of this pandemic, we're going to make our decisions based on the local and independent guidance of our healthcare providers in Tulsa. The city of Tulsa's mask order uh, currently is set to expire at the end of April. The Tulsa City Council and I will continue to discuss the timing of that expiration with the Tulsa Health Department and local hospital leadership. Uh, as of today, none of those advisors believe that we are ready uh, to end our mask order in Tulsa quite yet, but I do hear optimism from all of them about the current trajectory that we're on. They just want, as the people who are tasked 
with saving the lives of our neighbors, they want to make sure that that trajectory is moving us towards greater safety and that it continues. And I agree with them. Our evaluation of our local regulations will be day by day, not month by month. And as soon as those with expertise in protecting the health and safety of our community believe it's time to lift that order, we will do so. But after all the collective sacrifice of the last year, we must not drop our guard prematurely just because it'd be politically popular. Lastly, uh, I want to thank our local health care providers who've signed up to assist with vaccine distribution. We have over 200 different health care partners locally that are ready to help distribute this vaccine as quickly as we can get it from the federal government. And the reduction in hospitalizations as the vaccine has been deployed is remarkable. Just to put this in context, on January 8th, we hit an all-time high of 466 COVID hospitalizations in Tulsa County. Yesterday, we had 85. So we're on the right path, but we need to make sure that it's sustainable. I couldn't conclude this that saying how proud I am of our team at the city of Tulsa and all the work that they've done over the last year. You have police officers, and firefighters, and EMTs who have received calls for help and didn't check to see if the person had COVID or not, didn't care. They went to save their lives. We've had folks just in the last few weeks that have been out working in negative 20 wind chill to get our streets cleared and to fix our water lines. When we realized that we're in the middle of a national recession and we we're in a budget crunch, Instead of having to look at layoffs like the city has in the past, our employees sacrificed their own pay to make sure that our public safety apparatus could remain fully deployed to protect Tulsans. This is an extraordinary team, Tulsa, that you've got working to serve you. And I'm so proud to be the mayor and to work with them every day. For everybody in our community, please continue to take care of yourselves your families, and our community by getting that vaccine as soon as it's your turn. I'm still anxious for it to be my turn. I haven't had it yet, but I can't wait. Uh, please keep wearing those masks, watching your distance and washing your hands. And let's get through this hopefully final stage of this awful pandemic and move on to the great things that are in store for our community moving forward. And now uh, it's always an honor for me to turn it over to my colleague from Tulsa County, County Commissioner Karen Keith. Please stand by for the next speaker. An honor for me to turn it over to my colleague from Tulsa County, County Commissioner Karen Keith. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Please stand by for the next speaker. Karen, you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I guess there is some advantage at this point to being 65 plus. So. Turn it over to my colleague from Tulsa County, County Commissioner. Thank you, Mayor. Um, you know, it's so hard to believe that it has been one year since all this started. Um, I can remember standing uh, in our first press conference at the health department's offices, wondering what would happen next. And I think we all thought, eh, this will be three months, four months, five months at the most, but here we are a year later. And I have to say, I'm so grateful to our mayor, our first responders, the doctors and nurses, and our city county health department. You know, I'm hoping that you will all contact your legislators to let them know, um, I think this is important to hear about this House Bill 2504. Putting it simply, you pay property taxes to support your local health department. And House Bill 2504 is designed to give the state more control over our local health departments across the state. I am personally opposed to this and proud of the way our health department led by Dr. Dart has handled this pandemic. And in keeping with Oklahoma traditions, I believe local control is our best option. Should we ever be in the same situation again, I would want our city county health department leading the effort. Now, I know this has been a, a long year for them uh, and I, can't, I just can't imagine how they've held up. 
but they've done it for all of us. And while everyone has suffered in one way or another, and some so much more than others, there is a positive that's come from this last year. We've learned to hold our families closer and to cherish the time we get with our friends and coworkers. We have learned more about what is a true priority for each of us. And we've all learned more about vaccines and pandemic impacts around the world. In many ways, our world is much smaller knowing that we all have so much in common with our global brothers and sisters. We've all experimented in our search for the best face masks for comfort and for fun. And our County United Way campaign made this mask so that I am set for St. Patty's Day. I think it's really cute. Um, so I'm hoping that everyone will mask up, even though most St. Patrick's Day celebrations are gonna be outside. I know we're gonna gather in close proximity. So let's not let our guard down just yet. You know, and have experienced about with COVID and for some the lingering after effects. Now, tragically, we all know and have suffered the loss of someone we love. I still grieve the loss of my uncle Harley, uh, who died from this virus, like so many of our elders. But I'm also so grateful that my sister survived her breast cancer in the midst of this pandemic, and now also has both of her shots. And mother, um, it's now over a month after receiving both of her vaccines, and she is set to celebrate her 92nd birthday in May, and we will be getting together, being careful to celebrate. Now, last Sunday was the first time I had to tell the story, but mother uh, was able to go to church and she was so excited. Well, I forgot she was going. So of course I called her during mass and the ringer was still on and the phone rang for all to hear. So mother, I apologize about that, but I'm so glad you're back at church. Now, as we move forward, I invite you all to imagine what our lives may look like a year from now, but also remember what we have come through and overcome. The number of flu cases are down simply because of our new habits, including wearing masks. And the experiences I share today, they're only mine, but I know and acknowledge that every single person has sacrificed, been affected, and deeply felt the impacts of COVID this past year. We are on our way out of this darkness and we all just need to hold on a little bit longer. So even if you've received both of your doses of your vaccine, Please continue to wear your mask, practice social distancing, and wash your hands. We have gotten through so much in this last year and have made such headway. Please don't stop now. Stay vigilant and keep looking for the light. And enjoy St. Patrick's Day in two weeks in your own wearing of the green masks. So thank you to everyone. And now a word from one of our local heroes, Dr. George Monks. The Oklahoma State Medical Association president. Dr. Monks. Please stand by for the next speaker. Thank you. We will now hear from Dr. Monks. Dr. Monks, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Keith. Really repeat, uh, appreciate your remarks. Today we've come together to mark the sad milestone this month in Oklahoma of our first death from COVID. And remember the more than 7,000 Oklahomans who have died from this terrible disease. This loss has left an emptiness in our hearts and our communities. And while we've learned far too much this year about illness, loss, and grief, I'd like to take a moment to discuss the resilience that has shown throughout our state especially when it comes to how we have approached healthcare. For those of us in medicine, the past year has been filled with unthinkable change, sacrifice, and heartbreak. We've had to learn new ways of staving off infection and how to help our patients through phones and computer screens. We've watched our hospital staff overcome supply shortages and treatment challenges with creativity and dedication. We witness other healthcare workers forego time with their families, vacations, and even holidays in an effort to save the lives of those hospitalized due to COVID. 
We listen as they've urged Oklahomans to stay safe through mask wearing and social distancing and heard their frustrations when those pleas were unheeded by some. We've seen the heartbreak that has affected so many families, friends, and colleagues who have lost a loved one to COVID. And we felt the ache of incredible loss as we've watched the number of coronavirus deaths rise to above 7,000 here in our state. I'd like to take a moment to thank all the doctors, nurses, first responders, and all the healthcare professionals who have dedicated extraordinary hours to helping thousands of Oklahomans navigate and recover from coronavirus. Your efforts cannot be measured in hours or days, but in the care you've given to those at their most vulnerable moments, the compassion you've shared with families following a loss, and the numerous lives you saved, we are all in your debt. And lastly, I'd like to share my gratitude with Tulsa Mayor G.T. Bynum, Tulsa Health Department Director Dr. Bruce Dart, Tulsa County Commissioner Karen Keith, and all those in public service whose leadership and hard work have protected the lives of so many, not just in this community, but really throughout the state. Desmond Tutu once said, hope is being able to see that there is light despite all the darkness. While this is certainly true, we're at a point in the fight against COVID where hope shines brighter than it has in months. Right now, we're seeing a decrease in the number of positive cases and hospitalizations, partially due to the fact that we've uh, vaccinated or given out more than 1 million vaccine doses and more vaccines are on the way. That doesn't mean we're ready to put up our masks and return to normal. It is essential to follow the three W's. Wash your hands, watch your distance, and wear a mask, whether or not you've been vaccinated. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Monk. Uh, please stand by while we bring everybody back in, and we will uh, be led by Aliyah Shimi with the Tulsa Metropo Metropolitan Ministry and a benediction to end us. Please stand by. Metropolitan Ministry in uh, Metropolitan Ministry in a benediction to end us. Please stand by. Thank you all for being here with us today. I would now like to turn the floor over to Ali Ashimi with the Tulsa Ministry Metropolitan in Ministry. Ministry. Thank you. Metropolitan Ministry in a benediction to end us. Please stand by. Would you all please join me in the spirit of prayer? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I begin in the name of God, most merciful and most compassionate. Lord, as we gather today to remember all of our loved ones who we've lost over the past year. Hello. Hey, John, it's Chris. Oh, hi. Hey, uh, do you have a second? Yeah, I just thought I would. Most compassionate one. We convey our deepest condolences and we pray through your mercy. May their souls rest in eternal peace. Most compassionate one, grant solace and ease, the sorrows of the bereaved families and give them strength, hope and peace. Sustainer of all, we pray for all of our brothers and sisters who have contracted this illness. Ease their suffering, and grant them complete recovery. Almighty God, protect and watch over all of our medical and supporting frontline heroes who are fighting this virus. Grant them strength and sustain them as they are selflessly rendering life-saving assistance. Holy One, as we navigate through these turbulent times, we ask for you to grant wisdom and the strength to persevere to our leaders to be able to make courageous evidence-based decisions for the safety and the well-being of all Tulsans. Ya Rabbal Alameen, O creator of the heavens and the universe, we pray for your strength, hope, and unity for all of our community members. As we are facing difficult times, enable us to aid and ease the burdens for one another every single other. 
We humbly pray and ask for all of this and peace. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Aaliyah. Uh, we will now shortly begin the question and answer segment. Please stand by. We will now begin the question and answer portion of the press conference. Our first question is for Dr. Dart from uh, Fox 23. Uh, first part of the question, is Tulsa County getting any of the state's first doses of Johnson & Johnson? And if so, are they mostly going to community partners to help lower income areas and the homeless community since they have the most trouble making an appointment and traveling to a distribution site? Um, very good question. And yes, we are. And, and you're absolutely right. We're um, using that vaccine to vaccinate our, our homeless, our underserved, our, our populations that are, are hard to reach. And, and we, uh, we hope that that, that will um, help keep that, those demographics safe. And one dose makes it much easier to ensure that we can, we can keep them that way. Uh, next question is also for Dr. Dart from Fox 23. Um, we are now one year out from COVID's arrival here. What do you know now that you wish you would have known then? <laughs> There's a whole bunch of stuff. Um, bottom line is that no one knew how, how long this was gonna last. No one expected to be here today and be talking about COVID-19. Um, but we've also found some amazing things that have occurred over this past year that I think we'll, we'll carry with us forever. So yes, it's been a, a, a tragedy. It's also been very um, enlightening. And like any crisis, um, you know, we, I think we, we know that that we have to continue to respond as long as it's here. And that's what we'll do. And um, that's our mission. And we'll always meet our mission. Thank you, Dr. Dart. Uh, we have that same question uh, for Mayor Bynum for from Fox 23. Uh, what do you know now that maybe you wish you would have known then, Mayor? Well, I, I think if I look back uh, on you know, early March, I think the greatest thing that has changed is I think most of us know at this point what we need to do to protect ourselves from the virus. Um, some folks do a better job of it than others, uh, but I think many of us remember you know, wiping down our mail with antibacterial stuff, and uh, I remember going anytime we would have a press conference, I'd go home and take all my clothes off and wash them and take a shower and make sure I wasn't infecting my family. I mean, we didn't have a good handle on the fact that it is largely transmitted through aerosol droplets from people's respiratory systems. And that if you wear a mask, uh, that that can make all the difference in the world. Um, I even think about the way ma mask wearing has evolved uh, and public awareness around that, that you don't need necessarily an N95 mask uh, to keep yourself safe. That uh, a cloth mask, like I think most people now utilize, is every bit as helpful in slowing the transmission of the virus. So uh, I think it, it's that today, you know, we're at a point, we have been for months now, where people are by and large going about their daily lives, but equipped with the knowledge of what they need to do to protect themselves. And in the early going, when you had a brand new virus that you know was in the United States for maybe a couple of weeks before it made its way to Tulsa, uh, and in other countries where it had been, it was still too new to have good information on the nature of it or how it was spread. Um, uh, we had to just do the best that we could with the worst case uh, scenario. So uh, I think that would have made all the difference if we, you know, and, and I don't think there's any medical way we could have known, but uh, it would have been nice to be able to hop in the DeLorean and go forward a year and, and know how it spread and the way, what steps most of us can take to slow that spread. And we could have, you know, re-engaged uh, probably a, a little bit earlier than we otherwise did. Thank you, Mayor. Next question is for Dr. Dart from Fox 23. Uh, the state uh, changed how it is preliminarily counting the number of people who have died uh, with COVID-19. Do you think while we adjust to this new way of counting, we will discover more people in Tulsa County have died from the virus than previously reported? 
You know, we, we really need more information, but I would assume yes. Um, you know, there was a, a fairly large uh, differential in, in the state's website and CDC's website. So I would assume that, that part of that differential must be made up of uh, Tulsa County residents. Thank you, Dr. Dart. And kind of a follow up to that question to Dr. Monks. Um, how much does the change in the way Oklahoma reports COVID deaths impact how Tulsa and the state compares to surrounding states and the rest of the country? Thank you for that question. You know, I'll tell you, having lived in Oklahoma since the 1980, I can tell you what Oklahomans want. They want the truth, even if it's difficult, even if it's something they don't want, don't want to hear, we've got to tell them the truth. And uh, we can't sugarcoat things. Uh, we can't overinflate numbers or underinflate numbers. We need timely, accurate data to give Oklahomans. They deserve it. You know, uh, this, this subject has kept me awake at night, I'll be honest with you. And I've really been researching it, trying to dig into to what's happening. And, and there was a very large differential between the CDC numbers, which is based on death certificate information, which is the most accurate way to, to uh, look at deaths. Uh, versus what our Oklahoma State Health Department was showing. Uh, there, in fact, there was a 2,500 differential. That is a huge differential. Uh, and if you look at it, our state had the greatest COVID death reporting discrepancy in the United States uh, when I looked at the information. And so I'm encouraged by the fact that the State Health Department is now uh, publishing what the CDC number is on their website and also acknowledging that they need to do, you know, a better job at, at reporting data in a more timely uh, and accurate fashion. And so I'm certainly encouraged by that, um, but we've got to get it right. I think our state health department has done a fantastic job at vaccinating Oklahoma and they've done a very poor job at uh, giving out timely and accurate information about deaths. And we're one of the slowest, we are the slowest state in the country at releasing these numbers. And these numbers are important. Uh, why are they important? They're important because uh, that information tells us how COVID is impacting our state and it allows us to focus on geographic areas where we're seeing more deaths and we can uh, push out more mitigation efforts in those areas. And so I'm encouraged that the state health department has acknowledged this very large discrepancy and they're trying to take steps to make it better. But you know, when we fail at something, we have to look at it. We have to find out why did we fail? Uh, how did we fail? And how can we improve things moving forward? And I think the state health department is tar starting to take those steps. And I appreciate that. Thank you, Dr. Monks. Uh, this will be our last question of the press conference. And it is for Mayor Bynum from Fox 23. People are starting to wonder if they still have to wear a mask after being fully vaccinated. Is the city thinking of any exceptions to its mask mandate for people who have been fully vaccinated and can show their completed vaccine card if asked to present it? Uh, so the city council and I, we established uh, last summer a COVID working group uh, where we meet routinely uh, to get advice from our local uh, healthcare experts, and we have a, a meeting set for tomorrow to uh, discuss our mask order and get their advice um, from a more general standpoint on timing, but also on specific policy considerations like this one. So I, I don't have a, an answer for you at this moment because I haven't been the recipient of any guidance from uh, healthcare experts who would know a whole lot more about that uh, than I do at this point. My, my, well, yeah, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I learned early on in this, I should not make predictions. So I will not make a prediction, but I am looking forward to our meeting tomorrow. Thank you, Mayor Bynum. And that will conclude our COVID press conference for today. Thank you all for being here and, and being a part of it. And thank you to all the healthcare workers out there uh, who are taking care of uh, all of all of us. Uh, we appreciate your hard work. Uh, thank you all very much and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you.